Welcome to uh, Why Not Make, a channel devoted to those projects and ideas that um, we do because we can, not necessarily because it makes sense. And that is today's project here. This is something I've been messing with for the last couple of years. It's an old Honda Hobbit moped frame that I got in a condition that was uh, kind of unsalvageable. So I used the frame and some of the components to convert it into a, basically an electric, what used to be moped, but now is a heavy bicycle. Um, I put the battery in the back inside a old boom box because why wouldn't you put it inside an old boom box? And we've got a master power switch here. We've got lots of uh, features like wood and pulleys and uh, some shoddy electrical work. This is um, not very practical, not very um, uh, realistic for uh, long distance travel. I came over here from my house and um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a bicycle, if I'm an electric bicycle, if I'm just a badass, but let's take a look at what went into making this um, electric moped. All right, now here's what the bike looked like when I got it. This is a like 1980s era Honda Hobbit or PA 50. It's a moped, so you've got pedals that actually can uh, move the rear wheel. And then you've got a little motor, you know, 49cc motor that when I got it, it was missing the gas tank. The motor was seized up. Um, I was able to give some of the parts to somebody that I knew that could use them. But I had an idea, and that was to maybe convert it into an electric, you know, retro kind of motorcycle like I did. And now here's what it looks like today. It is come, it's come through like a lot of different versions, and I'll kind of show you a little bit about that. But as you can see, I've painted it but it's the same frame and it's uh, the same you know, tires and then that back drive kind of wheel hub is the same, but I've taken the original motor off and mounted a electric motor to it. So before it looked like this, it looked a little different. I had it painted yellow um, and I was just kind of trying to figure out how to uh, create the structure that I needed because the old motor uh, itself actually provided a lot of structure for the bike. In that version, you can see I was using a different battery pack. I was actually using a 18650 cell battery pack that I created out of old laptop batteries, but it just didn't work out. So now I'm using something different and I'll show you that a little later. The way this works is the DC motor is mounted under the bike and it's in the same position where the old um, you know, gasoline motor was. It's got a throttle that'll actually, you know, increased speed on that motor and then it goes to a belt that drives that rear wheel hub and on this side it's belt driven on the other side is actually a chain for the original kind of moped aspect of this it has pedals that was a chain to the rear wheel to create that structure i'm using wood which uh, is you know the best thing i could figure out just kind of to fabricate to kind of prove this out and so that plywood is actually holding the bike and recreating some of the structure that the original motor used to provide. So this is a pulley that I've mounted directly onto the, the um, I guess the DC, or the shaft of that DC motor. And that motor is a 500 watt, 24 volt uh, brushed DC motor. And the leads from that go up through the actual, you know, tube of the bike and then come out along with some of the other electronic wiring that goes to the front panel and that all goes into this boom box which is the uh, holder of all electronics kind of on this and it is a old boom box shell that I had that I figured what a cool thing to uh, cool way to use it and hold all these electronics so inside I'm using two lipo battery packs each of these packs are about five or are five cells and i put them in series so fully charged it charges up to about 42 volts now these are not very high capacity batteries but they can put out a lot of current so i'm not going to be uh, faced with an issue of not really having enough current to drive the bike but I am going to be faced with the issue of not having a lot of capacity. I'm not going to be able to go very far before these batteries, you know, need to be recharged. And these are specialized batteries. They are something that you're going to need to have a special charger for. 
And so this isn't super practical. I have to take the batteries out and charge them. Um, you need to use some kind of battery uh, balance charger that's designed for these batteries. So you can see I put these two batteries in series and then that goes into a power fuse which is I think 20 amps and that is at least some safety because those LiPo battery packs don't have a lot of safety features built into them inherently. So from that fuse, I go into a kind of a power key switch which has a little uh, key on the outside of the boom box so I can turn it on and off, but that power switch is kind of a high current switch that takes the um, battery output and then feeds into the other electronics. So from that switch, you really are just feeding power to two things. You're feeding power to the uh, scooter controller and to a kind of a buck converter. The scooter controller, um, those are designed for certain voltage and they are going to be the brains really of the throttle and outputting the voltage to the actual motor that's mounted there so that you have um, the ability to pull the throttle and then uh, speed up or slow down. The other thing I'm feeding power into is this kind of buck converter which just takes the higher 36 volts and lowers it down to 12 volts. That, that goes through a fuse and then that 12 volts is what feeds the headlight up front and also provides the 12 volts needed for the DC voltage meter that I've also got mounted up front. That voltage meter allows you to press a button and see what the voltage is of the battery. Right now it's about 38 and a half volts. Again, this battery charges up to about 42 volts when it's full and it's not. So obviously the cable management kind of sucks, but that's why I put it in a boom box so that once you close it up, it looked awesome. The boom box is going to, well, it's, it's like mounted to the back rail there and then it feeds the wires down through the tube and the motor power is fed out right there and then the accessory kind of wires go up to a light switch for the headlamp. It also has that DC battery meter and I took the old light switch and made that the kill switch for the motor so that goes to the scooter controller and then this is the momentary switch for turning on and seeing what the battery power is. Important to still have brakes. I only have one hooked up which is the front brake and these are old drum brakes. I need to tweak it a little bit to make sure it's tight. Uh, a little bit of tape and you've got yourself something that you can cruise down the street not safe not smart but it's something that works and it was just fun to show you guys and uh, it's fun to ride around on and see what i can do so there it is my honda hobbit which is now a electric uh, vintage moped i have some plans to do a little bit more video on the different battery solutions i kind of messed with because as I alluded to earlier, I did try some different batteries and I made some myself out of old laptop batteries and then I ended up kind of changing over to the LiPo packs that I'm using now. Again, this isn't a practical, you know, conversion and this isn't a practical vehicle, but it was fun to do. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. And uh, thanks for checking Why Not Make and we'll see you next time.